What is up, guys? It is Dylan Lepore here, and we just did the E3 press conference uh, coverage, and that was uh, pretty awesome. It was a pretty fast uh, E3 press conference. Uh, Sean Layden only showed up about like Twice. two times throughout the uh, entire thing, and uh, yeah, it was just uh, very fast, and uh, I think they had like a total of like 17-ish games, maybe 20. Uh, that's what I've counted so far, but uh, it was a nice surprise, some of the treats they had, but it was more of a uh, recovery from last year's. They only showed a bunch of teasers last year. This uh, year, we see a bunch of gameplay, and we see some uh, God of War, we see some Spider-Man, things we've been wanting to see for a while now. We didn't get a release date with uh, God of War, but we get a release date for Spider-Man, and they only said t 2018, but uh, that... Uh, is uh, pretty much uh, good for me. Right now, we have special guest, oh. Stephen Stanelli. Oh my god, why? <laughs> uh, welcome, uh, Stephen. And uh, how do you feel about the E3 press conference? Uh, well, it's my very first conference I've ever watched before. I've never really paid attention to E3 that much. But for the first conference, I thought it was really fun. I actually would have loved to be there because of the fact that they have a lot of good visual graphics. Just besides of what they put on the projector, they're like they had snow falling when in the in the beginning of E3 when they were talking when they were what was it here or I think it was when they were doing Horizon Zero Down. I don't remember exactly which one it was, but point being is they had all these great visual effects. I think I do wish they would have talked more like the Xbox did, but I'm glad they didn't really talk about price either because all Xbox did on their on their conference. Oh yeah, I guess I did say this was my first conference. My second conference. They anyway. just uh, they just talked a lot about Scorpio. Right. Uh, but that's that's what they wanted to hear. But uh, I did like that they showed they showed forty two games. Mm -hmm. uh, not in depth as uh, Sony did mm -hmm. uh, with their gameplay, but they did show a lot. They also had a, a, sizzle, a sizzle reel at the end for their. Uh, Indie games uh, went out, uh, which was like 20 indie games. They just went uh, really quickly. Uh, but after uh, that, yeah, Sony uh, press conference, the very beginning was kind of weird. It, mm -hmm. uh, I was like, that's definitely Uncharted when I saw it. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, continue. Uh, but um, Overall, I think that I, I think they were focusing more on PlayStation only games. Like, of course, they had Call of Duty World War Two in there that you know across, that is both consoles. But majority of the games they did show tonight, even the remake of Shadow of the Colossians, is it? it, it Shadow just, of the Colossus. Yeah, all all mainly PS4 games or PlayStation in general games. They I think they wanted to focus on mainly what they were going to come out with, not not third party games, just mainly first party. And uh, for anybody who doesn't know who Blue Point is, uh, Blue Point is like known for their uh, uh, remakes and uh, uh, their HD collections. Uh, you'll see them on every HD collection from now on to the future because they're just really good at bringing those HD collections. And uh, anytime you see them, just uh, anytime they see their logo, just expect them. They're not making their own game. They're just doing a remake. That's not a bad thing uh, at all because they're making Shadow of the Colossus, which was a humongous surprise uh, for everyone at E3 this year uh, because it was – Something that we all been waiting for, and nobody can really play uh, the E3 uh, press conference. Uh, nobody can really play uh, uh, Shadow Mordor. I don't know why I say nobody can play the E3 press conference. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but nobody really can play Shadow Mordor anymore because of the graphics on it, and the uh, it's just uh, the mechanics and graphics overall in that game have uh, poorly aged. Uh, even though the game's great, it's just it's been poorly aged. And but now uh, with the trailer we saw, it looks super nice, and I'm super excited to uh, finally uh, get to play that in its HD glory. Uh, even though it did a uh, transfer over to the PS3, it wasn't that great of a transfer over. Uh, but it, then again, it's uh, pretty exciting to see uh, Shadow of uh, uh, the Colossus because of the. Uh, the scope of how big the monsters are really huge, yeah. and uh, seeing how big they are is uh, really nice. But uh, let's uh, actually talk about 
God of War a little bit. God of War was actually uh, pretty cool. What did you think of it? I played God of War on the PSP back, back way back when, um, and I never really liked the game back then because I was younger, a lot of blood and gore, but I did play it and I did beat it. And to see now that he has a kid, I think having the kid is going to make a, make the perspective a little different. He's going to be more teaching a lesson towards the kid and also fighting throughout the story. And also, the kid seems to know stuff that he doesn't. Like, for instance, in the scene where that big monster comes up, he knows exactly what the monster is and knows exactly what he's saying. To where the where the guy, I don't know his name, but the guy is like, what is this? What is he saying? So I think that's, he, uh, that, yeah, that's something I thought was uh, pretty uh, funny. Uh, how in most of the games where a monster pops up, he's like, well, I'm going to have to kill this. <laughs> but this time, he gives his axe back and like befriends him. Uh -huh. I thought that was uh, pretty funny. But go on. I want to know what the cursed is. I want to know. I know. I, I want to know how he was cursed. I want maybe there's a story I don't know about, but I want to know how the kid was possibly cursed. How? What is actually the truth? The ke thing that ke the thing I got from that main thing is that there's going to be a really good story to it, and and I and I feel like the the answer to what the truth was, what happened to the mother. I I don't know. Maybe some we already know what happened to the mother. I just don't know because I don't. I never saw that in the story, but I think we at least are going to learn in that game what happened to the mother and why he is why the kid is now with the father. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I uh, put in the article I was writing, uh, that uh, his mother, we don't know anything about the story of the child. We don't really know anything at all about them, uh, but seeing with their mother and uh, uh, everything like that, uh, because God of War is a very... The original God of War is a very lonely game. You're you're mostly out there just killing stuff all by yourself, and any humans you find, you kill them too. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> just kill even them, though if them. they try to help you, you kill them for some reason. Mm -hmm. I tried to not kill as many humans because I was like, this place is kind of lonely, and this is a lot of death and destruction. Because I got the uh, PS3 uh, Collector's Edition because that came out with five God of War games in one game in one box. Which was really nice. It came with the PSP ones and the uh, PS3 ones, and yeah, it's just a really lonely and death and destruction game. And uh, this new one, I like it because uh, it's going to uh, flesh out the characters and uh, go inside the head of uh, Kratos because uh, they have a rage meter for uh, Kratos, and uh, when his uh, son was aggravating him, and uh, Kratos would yell at him uh he would uh snap at him and his rage meter would go up so i don't know what would happen if that rage meter went all the way up uh if he like, killed his child <laughs> if that went all the way up uh but yeah sony has been doing a lot with uh you can see this from the last of us and plenty of other games recently there's always been like this bigger adult taking care of this smaller child uh teen child mm -hmm. Family. Something child, yeah, family oriented, and that has been happening a lot recently. Like, it's not a bad thing at all, but it's just been happening a lot recently. And uh, I guess uh, it's been uh, helping develop characters, and people can feel more attached to it with these uh, epic storytelling games, like uh, God of War is now trying to be. And so far, it's uh, looking pretty good at what it's doing. I just had to ask: Do you think that the um that it it's like that because like they waited this long because you know on the last E3 conference there um they it what like they did talk about God of War they didn't really put much out about it but they did do you think they waited for the PS4 Pro to be out to release or to even talk about God of War because if you looked at the end of the trailer it said this is PS4 Pro footage at the bottom mm -hmm. it said that so do you think that they waited to release the game or even talk about it was because they wanted for greater hardware. Or do you think it was just because they didn't know what they were going to do with the story yet? Well, they definitely... Because they released it uh, definitely before... Uh, they released God of War before. Uh, well, they didn't release it before PlayStation Pro. Pro but uh, when PlayStation Pro was announced, uh, they did a smaller event, I think, last year? It was either last year or sometime in the middle of the year 
this year, they did a smaller event that showed off uh, the PlayStation uh, 4 Pro, but I'm pretty sure last year they showed it off before the Pro was even announced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, they did. They did. They showed yeah, it off. Yeah. They just didn't. They didn't. They didn't really like give any date, and they still haven't given any dates of when this game is actually be fully released. Yeah, but you know they want to. They want to show it in the Pump best the quality. Over, yeah. The best quality they can right now, like uh, Xbox, uh, Xbox One X, not Scorpio anymore. Xbox One X, uh, they're showing every game in their uh, Xbox system uh, uh, with uh, their uh, liquid cooling and their. Uh, I got all their uh, seven teraflop or six teraflop. Seven. GP. Eight, eight plus million pixels and 4K, true 4K with HDR, 4K UHD, Blu-ray playback, 1.6 teraflops GPU clocked at 1.7, 172 gigahertz at 2.12 gigs of GDR5 memory, 3. Point, nope, 33, <laughs> what is it, 326 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth cool that yeah, that is a i will that not is a lot that in the next five minutes but <laughs> uh that's why on this video or mp3 player there is a playback button and welcome to the monday morning playstation podcast if you are new here each and every week on monday at 6 a.m eastern time I release the MP3 and video file on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Dylan's Legos or SoundCloud at Dylan's Lake SoundCloud.com forward slash Dylan underscore Lepore. And if you feel like donating a couple bucks, you can go to youtube.com. Nope. Sorry. YouTube.steamlabs.com forward slash Dylan Lapore. Throw us a couple bucks, say hi, and support me and keep the lights on and keep this uh, video thing running so I can eventually get uh, SoundCloud Pro Unlimited to keep this thing rolling. And uh, eventually, uh, I'm going to go into iTunes and you guys can uh, listen to me every Monday all you want. Well, yeah. Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Spider Man. The last thing they Spider-Man? last thing should they showed at the very end. They apparently a very special. Um, they, they what do they say? It was very special, like a very special publishing company or whatever. Correct. Do you mean uh? Do you mean Insomniac Games or do you mean what the last thing they showed at? Because the last thing they showed at was Miles. Miles is a Miles is I'm not since I'm not really that too big of a comic book nerd. Uh, Miles is a uh, I believe is a sidekick or like uh, he help he trains under Spider Man. Mm-hmm. He helps Spider Man in some way, uh, but that's all I know of him so far. The other guy is called uh, what is it, Mister Negative, Master Negative or something. Uh, he. It's it's like dark energy negative. Uh, that's what you see in the trailer, mm-hmm. and he's working with Wils- uh, Wilson Fisk, which we all know, uh, uh, the Kingpin from uh, Daredevil and uh, such, uh, which is a uh, pretty cool. He's working with him, and uh, I like how the all the licensed versions have the different versions of uh, the Kingpin and everything. Uh, uh, it's just. Uh, I thought this was a very interesting take on uh, the new Spider-Man, and I uh, kind of like it. Not sure how the whole open world works, because I'm thinking it's more of a uh, Batman Arkham vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not and, so much a GTA uh, vibe, either. Yeah, and it has uh, these Uncharted-like sequences in it, like with these big action sequences and the cinematic sequences that really won't happen in open world games. So I'm thinking like the missions, the main story missions are not typically your open world esque play style, but more the side missions and the gathering and the collecting is all like uh, the open world esque vibe. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 
What do you think? I thought it was very action packed. I mean, at first I was like, I was like, okay, Spider Man, okay, and then and then um, it like you he slow it. I love how right off the bat it started off with stealth attacks. Like it showed you the the little features that they've put all the effort in for animations. Like they've done all this work. You can tell they actually worked on hard. And then and then it 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 does the whole contradictory thing of of he's saving enemies from enemies. And that like that's never been a thing of Spider Man, at least I am not but he's a child in well, this one. Well yeah. And can't just start flinging people off buildings. I well, mean yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how you're raised, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't go on my building and start sh- shoving people off. <laughs> oh yeah, I understand that. I just think that I think it's. It, I love. It's like a little. It, it was like a little movie. Which trailers are supposed to? They're supposed to grab you, engage you, and want to buy the game. And it did. It it, it pulled me in. It really maybe just that one mission. You know, grabbing that helicopter and not letting it fall on the people of. New York, or I think it's where he is, right? New York, yeah. And, and so you know, I just all that action, and then also having all the good graphics with the. There, I think, I think Sony's overall thing was showing how good their graphics are on all these new games, but yeah, uh, especially uh, Insomniac and Studios. Uh, Insomniac Studios has been working on uh, this new Spider-Man game uh, since they took it over the Spider-Man uh, license. Uh, but yeah, they're really good if you ever played the Ratchet and Clank games. So every like Ratchet and Clank game seems like a Pixar movie, mm-hmm. so they're really good at keeping the graphics and keeping it stylish and keeping it bright and beautiful and uh, lots of colors. And they definitely did that. There was this one scene uh, in top of the building where he was fighting some people, and he goes around, he fights them and flings them around, and then he gets this one guy and he. Uh, puts his uh, webs around him and he puts his webs around him so that he punches himself in the face and knocks himself out which mm-hmm. I thought was that it was a comedic right right like, right fighting, fighting style especially for uh, spider-man mm-hmm. which I thought was uh pretty uh, uh, neat but yeah the everything uh, falling off uh, that was a lot of destruction mm-hmm. and uh, I thought uh, spider-man was a little bit uh, messy mm-hmm. during those parts because it was like it was Buildings tumbling down. Not the entire buildings, but no, not important. Like <laughs> parts of the buildings falling down. I was like, he's getting a little bit messy. And and the, and the, and the lady yeah, even says is. that. The lady who was who was yeah, saying, I know. Like is we don't know. We have, I have no clue who she is. I think she's like a new character. Uh, the uh, uh, what do you call him? The operator. The, I don't know what to call him. Uh, the orca oracle. The oh. Oracle. Uh, but yeah, uh, Spider-Man. Uh, really excited about that. They said the release date is 2018. I thought by now... Uh, God of War, since God of War doesn't even have a release date, uh, I thought they would have something attached to that, but I guess uh, they're still working on it, which is fine by me, and fine by me that they're still working on uh, Spider-Man for 2018, because they Insomniac and... Uh, now, Santa Monica Studios, they can take all the time they need because those games uh, deserve as much time to work on mm-hmm. as possible. Which <sighs> also brings to an interesting point. Is it okay that even though, like, all these games in E3, you know, most games E3 you have to wait for a little bit. Like, for instance, um, Uncharted Lost Legacy is coming out in August. That's not that far away, but every majority of the games that were put out tonight were always 2018, 2018, early 2018, this 2018. Why is why why do you think that they're having to wait that long, or just why? Do you think it's okay oh, well, to have it that far away, but yet showing it now? Really, really, uh, this summer is always pretty dry for video mm-hmm. games. Like there's there's big video games that do come out, and there's like big DLCs that do come out during the summer, and there's a lot of games that come out before the summer, like Horizon Zero Dawn mm-hmm. and uh, Prey and things like that. Uh, but uh, it's just it's just more. I think it's more of a uh, they they do definitely do do need to work on their games, but it's definitely a marketing thing. Uh, because of you got to think of like uh, Christmas and the beginning of the holidays. Mm-hmm. Of course, me liking Destiny. Destiny's coming out on the sixth. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also when school starts. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> well so, after for you. Yeah. So, 
I hate uh, that they do that because I'm like, what do I really focus my attention on? <laughs> uh, but yeah, who needs school, right? Uh, I, got college. Des- I got destiny. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's uh, it's a marketing thing, and uh, it's just how they schedule things, and uh, uh, they have to s- make sure they, especially Sony, usually schedules their stuff on. Tuesdays, but that's beside the point. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's just a marketing thing. And uh, well, let's get into uh, eh, let's talk about some Detroit mm. uh, becoming human. Yep. What do you think about that? I think it's cool how they have the androids. You know, it kind of, it's yeah. it's one of the only games in the um in all the trailers that are futuristic. Majority of the games that we that they showed tonight were older type things. Call of Duty yeah. World War Two. You had your your um. Your other ancient, well, yeah, Shadow of Colossus. That was all Monster Hunter World. But we'll get we'll get to Monster Hunter World in a second. But my point being is that is that Detroit be- become human. I think it's cool how they're how it's like a human revolution to bring to bring these droids out of their slave states um, and be- and fight against the world. And 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 you can change the story. It's a really good market. Event. The marketing value is good because of the fact that you can sit there and play the game one time and beat the game all the way through and then play again as a whole different story. You can just do one little thing and change it. It's also kind of cool because you sit there and you're playing and if you if you if you mess up on something you can go back in time and change it. At least that's what it seems like is that you can go back and and fix that error that you did. Yeah, uh if you've ever played uh Heavy Rain or uh, Beyond Two Souls. Uh, this game is made by the same people. This, they've, they've been working on this game for uh, four years now. Uh, back a tech demo at GDC a long time ago, before the PS4 was even announced, uh, there was a tech demo for to, uh, Detroit. Uh, it was about a uh, making a robot. Uh, making a robot. We never saw the guy's face. Uh, there was this guy making a girl w- robot. And uh, the robot would be made, and uh, she she would become alive, and she uh, would be self-aware. She would be self-aware, and uh, the guy would sense that. The guy sensed that and was about to dismantle her. But then she started crying and uh, act, being sad and stuff. <laughs> and uh, the guy was like, fine. I'll put you back together, and then you can go. And so uh, that was basically the tech demo, uh, bas- uh, which was uh, pretty cool. Uh, the company, the developer that is charged this game is Quantum uh, Dream, and the designer uh, slash creative director for all these games is uh, uh, David Cage. I'll look him up. Uh, they make uh, his last game uh, featured uh, two solid actors, uh William Defoe and uh, God, what's what is her other name? Uh, it'll come to me some other time. But yeah, uh, their scripts in these games are humongous because of all the options and all the stuff you have to do and uh, all the different paths you can take that affect the game uh, drastically. Uh, and we haven't had a uh, Quantum Dream game on the PS4 yet at all. Uh, we've had the uh, the uh, the ports of uh, Heavy Rain and uh, Beyond Two Souls uh, to the PS4, but that <laughs> it's not really it because it's not a, a new game. Uh, but yeah, it, it takes uh, them a little while to make their games because of the writing and the uh, crafting and their design and their mm. the graphics are really stellar on it. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, good to see uh, that we uh, finally got a release date. Uh, that's 2018, I think. Yeah, just 2018 game. But yeah, overall, uh, Quantum uh, Dreams is pretty cool. Android uh, Revolution, which I uh, think is actually pretty scary if our uh, phones uh, went self-aware and started killing us. Mm. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Oh, no, that would be terrifying, personally. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my Android phone starts killing me. Uh, 
that would be pretty terrifying. Well, no, I mean, you remember they got the thing implanted in their mind. Like, what happened in the in the yeah. world? Like, what what actually happened? Yeah. Uh, for some reason, uh, the main character can. Uh, the main character can uh, touch people. I think he was a. He used to be a. Uh, uh, oh, it was android. An, an unself-aware android. Uh, and but then he has like this power. I don't know if all androids have this power, but somehow he can touch them, and uh, they can become uh, self-aware, which is a uh, pretty neat. But another uh, David Cage uh, game. Uh, Definitely looking forward to, and uh, definitely finally getting able to uh, play it and see it. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, talk about the failure that was uh, Monster Hunter World. What do you think about that? I I I don't I don't I didn't really understand the point of the game. It kind of came off sudden to me. Um, it, it it we're going back in time again. So we're following that trend of this year of games that we're going back in time again. But yet again, you got these really like robotic animals. Do you do you think that? Pe I mean, I not to question, but I think personally, we're we're starting to mix too much up with robots, and are we're mixing too much up with future and past. And I just I the only point of the game I see is like it's like a bigger vo version of Pokemon Go. Go go find your monsters. Go kill your monsters. I mean, and it's a huge difference. I understand, but it's that's just how it. That's how much I cared about it. It it, it was barely anything. Well, have you uh, have you played a Monster Hunter game before? No. Have you heard of Monster Hunter before? No. I understand. Uh, they are definitely a, point proven. Uh, actually, <laughs> they they uh, definitely hard games to get into. But the reason why I say it it was a a failure of some sorts. It was just a overall. It was their most blandest thing they've shown mm -hmm. overall the uh, whole press conference. Mm -hmm. uh, Monster Hunter is supposed to be a multiplayer game, and they only showed one, one person. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was supposed to be like this giant co-op game. In the first like two minutes. Or just gathering items right. from, like, bushes I, and I will admit, it had really cool gathering animations. It's not just a typical, like, move your hand and it's somehow you gather. It's like you have gathered item. It's actually a really yeah. cool animation. I will give them that. They did a really good job yeah. with animations. But I'm like, uh, I was like, for the most part, I was like, that is, I guess that's cool and all. But, like, where, where's the action? Where's the uh, stuff I wanted to see? Actually? You had the big but, sword! Hashtag Final Fantasy, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody has a every everybody in an RPG has a big sword. Uh, it's uh, no doubt if you are not walking around with a big sword, uh, <sighs> you bench. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Monster Hunter was uh, the graphics in it. I thought were uh, pretty Decent. bland. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was kind of bland actually because. I when I was looking at it, I was like, "Is this a PS3 game?" <laughs> <laughs> that's what I that's what I thought. I don't know if you thought that, uh, but yeah, I did like the I did like the one thing from it that kind of saved it. Uh, the guy uh, cooking a giant. Meal. I did. That was a really good comedian part. I really did think that was funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, Monster Hunter early 2018 game. Uh, if you guys uh, saw that, but yeah, uh, then uh, uh, we can talk about Marvel versus uh -huh. Capcom uh -huh. Infinite. Uh -huh. September seventeenth is the release date, yeah. uh, which is actually uh, pretty early. Uh, which is I haven't, I'm not really big into the fighting games, uh, but it's pretty early release date. Uh, because I haven't really heard that much about it, uh, besides today. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'd hope so. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, the, uh, it's good that they showed us, uh, I like that they showed us the story, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, how that's gonna play out with Ultron and, uh, <sighs> what's his name? Thanos. Uh, I'm glad they showed us the, uh, the story behind that and how Thanos is actually working uh, with you, with the uh, the good team, uh, 
And but the only thing about that is that it it went by so fast. He he he, he was like, um um, what was it? She said that we're gonna make you. He, he's like he's like, what are you gonna do? Make me work 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 for you? He's like, and and then the lady's like, yes, we are. And he's like, oh okay. And I'm just like, what? No, you can't. What? He wow. was being held in the prison. It's like, oh, I'm just gonna help you. Yeah, cool. Cool wow, thing. there's probably there's probably like a couple hours worth of events that go on be before that. <laughs> just saying, it seemed rather like conven- like rather unconvincing that he would just come out like that. And then, then there's like these these crystals that come out. I just did. But it's it's probably guaranteed that in the the story in some way he's going to be like yeah, screw I, all killed, you. I killed Ultron now uh Let me screw. free through all you guys, yeah. Uh, and then you can uh, play the uh, DLC vision. No. <laughs> uh, uh, they would do that, though, wouldn't they? Uh, but, yeah, uh, not, not that exciting. I think uh, Injustice was... Uh, Injustice 2 was... Uh, I think Injustice 2 was a good game overall. But, yeah, I think uh, this... Uh, could be a competitor not that really it didn't really uh especially the trailer didn't really get me as much the, gra- as, the uh, graphics were the weird type of graphics i, I call them the weird type because they're not the normal like like pristine graphics they're they're the good graphics that that make you have really good frames per second but it, it's just like kind of like that i'm i kind of tried graphics but kind of didn't what it's more of a comic vibe to it that makes and a sense. kiddish vibe too yeah, it's more. That's what that's what they normally do for their games. Uh, it also it's got it's a similar vibe to Street Fighter. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's what the games feel like. And uh, I don't know. Should be okay. I I mean I won't be getting it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you guys can go check it out. And the uh, demo. For the story is out today. If you can download uh, it on the PS4 store. Yeah, you can download it right now on the PS4 store, which is actually pretty neat. I'm going to go play that uh, and see if it's worth my time. Uh, but we'll definitely see about that. Then they did a sizzle, uh, sizzle reel uh, for uh, uh, VR games. Mm-hmm. They, they had uh, one, two, three, four, five VR games. They listed the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Kind of interesting how they keep bringing back that game. They brought, they showed Star Child, the Impatient, uh, which was kind of creepy in my opinion. Like, I mean, it was like all this. We'll, we'll go in detail in a second. And it, they, was, it was cool, but creepy. Yeah. And then, I they, liked it. And then they had Final Fantasy 16, right? Wasn't it 16 that they were showing? Yeah. And then, uh, no, pa- pa- and then Polyarch. So the games I got was Elder Scrolls VR, Star Child, uh, uh, the, impa- the Impatient, the Impatient, uh, Monsters of the Deep, Spring 2017, Bravo Team. That's what and it was, Moss. Monsters of the Deep. Yeah, Moss. Uh, yeah. So the Impatient uh, had a really cool vibe. I liked the music. Yeah, I, I liked it. Uh, it was like an 80s kinda... theme or whatever, like you know, like a Fallout theme. I was thinking yeah. Fallout immediately. Kind of remind me of the uh, first Outlet uh, Outlast game, kind of, uh, with the uh, in pa- when with the uh, Doctor scene, which is freaking weird. Uh, All I want is yeah, the best of, for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> kind of, uh, kind of creepy and kind of uh, scary too. It's uh, one of those. Uh, Was it the place behind the pines? Kind of vibe. Is that is that the movie? It's something with like. Doctors and stuff. It's a movie with doctors. And stuff. I think it has Leonardo Crappy on it, though. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, uh, Elder Scrolls VR. We already knew that. Uh, if you guys watched uh, Bethesda's boring conference, that was, uh, <laughs> that was pretty. That was pretty uh, boring. Uh, well, I mean, it's just Skyrim's and, coming back everywhere. It's coming back on PS4. It's coming on Nintendo Switch. It's coming on yeah. Xbox One. It's coming on PC. It's, uh, Skyrim has to be the most. Uh, there's no E3 that has gone without somebody saying Skyrim. <laughs> it's the most extended game. I mean, Skyrim came out like what 2006 or whatever. I mean, it, and it's, I mean, it's yeah. that's been seven years. I mean, uh, and I uh, have played about 
a whole five minutes of the entire. No, I play, no, I've played like hours of that game. I just can't get into it though. I, I I don't like the graphics. It's too. It's it's that weird type of well, graphics. And now they're continuing the. Uh, they're continuing the. Uh, uh, with the. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Mm-hmm. Which I also don't like yes. either, but... Yeah, but uh, a lot of people didn't really like Elder Scrolls Online, but uh, apparently with this new DLC, uh, what is it, Morwid? More... Mordwid? <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently with this new DLC, it's supposed to enhance a lot of stuff, uh, since we're not that big of uh, Elder Scrolls uh, fans. But yeah, it's supposed to... Uh, Enhance a lot of things, and the bear was actually pretty cool. Uh, I don't know where uh, Steven has gone, but apparently his mic keeps uh, cutting in yeah. and out. Uh, we'll yeah. see what yeah, happens I got with it. that. Sorry, Steven. Uh, but yeah, uh, more Dewid was uh, pretty cool. <clears throat> I guess if you're into that kind of stuff. I still can't hear you, Steven. No, no, I'm here. I, 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 I just haven't been talking. It says, but, I, it says I'm here. Uh, it says I'm here. Monsters of the it's Deep says, uh, was pretty cool. I can't hear Steven. It says it's green. What are you doing? <laughs> it shows. Uh, okay. All right. Do you fine. speak English? Uh, uh, Escombre or whatever. <laughs> uh, but uh, Bravo team uh, was pretty cool. It's like a uh, first. It's a first person, obviously, because most VR games are going to be first person. Uh, first person multiplayer shooter, arena shooter ish thing. Uh, it's basically a basic multiplayer shooter, uh, but <clears throat> uh, we can finally hear Steven. Uh, thank <laughs> God. I don't know um, why it keeps doing that. Sorry. But, uh, yeah. Bravo Team was. Uh, oh, Bravo Team. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I considered crazy. it a little baby edition of a of a actual shooting FPS. Yeah, anyway. that's that's what I was kind of talking about. It's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a uh, just your plain multiplayer shooter, but in a first uh, person VR vibe mm -hmm. to it. Well, it is first person VR, uh, but yeah, it just I guess it's just a uh, little like try out and let's see kind of game and how this actually works because Far Point just came out. And uh, okay. this is like the uh, second wave of VR games because the first wave was uh, of uh, Resident Evil Seven. I still need to play that game. Uh, Failure. That was that was basically the first uh, wave of the VR games, and Farpoint is the second wave. Hopefully, getting people more into it because the graphics and uh, the gameplay, especially the opening cinematic scene was actually really cool in uh, Farpoint, but it's good to see that they're coming out with new VR games, but uh, just don't... They want everybody to have a VR a Morpheus in, uh, inside their a house because uh, right now VR is the most accessible through PlayStation, and PlayStation is making it cheaper and making it... Uh, giving it to the consumers because we never thought... Uh, we would get a PlayStation VR because how long ago was the uh, PlayStation VR even announced? How, how long ago? 12, 2012, 13, one? around the PSP, as PSP was ending, right around that. Yeah, month. and they, and then were, were like, then then we were like, when are we ever going to get that? It's when, they, it's when they brought out the little wand thing that had a little purple ball at the end or whatever. It's when they had that. Well, I don't mean that. I don't know. I don't mean the PlayStation Move. I mean when it was the first. Uh, no, I'm saying that's uh, when they announced the VRs. When they had that. When they announced that, they announced at the same time. Well, I mean, I mean the headset. Oh. I mean, when when when, when do you think they announced the headset? The uh, Oculus. When did they first announce the Oculus? I. I thought it was somewhere near the time they brought out the PlayStation Move. It was Maybe it was. I mean, yeah. it can't be too far from it. It's been out. My point, your your point is right. They they talked about it a long time ago, and they're just now finally getting it out and and at it over the past few years. And it's the only one available to uh, like regular gamers, console, console gamer. gamers. Yeah, yeah. Because PCs uh, had VR for a little while, but nobody cares about PC. Uh, <laughs> I, I, okay, that that's uh, PlayStation podcast. I'll go with it. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, uh, Morpheus is. Uh, I like. I like the name Morpheus. So I'm gonna keep using it. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's glad to see. Let me get my notebook here. But it's glad to see that uh, VR is more accessible. And they just uh, Sony released a uh, point that they sold uh, millions of copies of. Uh, uh, not millions of copies, millions of units of the uh, Morpheus uh, VR system, uh, which is a slight dent in the uh, 50 million PS4 units sold. <laughs> uh, but uh, so like out of uh, one out of uh, 50 households has a uh, PS4 unit. I mean, not a PS4, a uh, Morpheus unit. Uh, so one of the actually. Yeah, go ahead. Which is actually pretty cool, but uh, what were you gonna say? Oh no, I was just gonna correct your your ratio. So for every one to fit, for so one for every one to fifty people who have a PS4, they have a VR headset. Yeah, uh, which is uh, kind of cool that the households had it. But then again, that's just a slight dent in the uh, marketplace. But it's glad to see because they're the only ones that actually have released their numbers on uh, VR so far, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Going back, I wanted to mention this. Going back to Shadow of Colossus, uh, the remake. We we just uh, they just announced uh, either uh, today we're recording this, which is the Monday before the Monday this is released. Yeah, we definitely get uh, up at six in the morning and record this. <laughs> uh, the Monday, uh, this Monday, uh, on the. Uh, no, it's 12th. Tuesday. It's Tuesday now. No, it's Tuesday now. It's it's the thirteenth. Uh, well, Monday. Well, we started on the twelfth. So Monday on the twelfth, uh, they somebody tweeted out or sent something out earlier this morning uh, that uh, PlayStation uh, per, re uh, re uh, was it repurchased bought their uh, trademark for uh, the Shadow of the Colossus. And so that gave me – so, like, the Shadow of the Colossus, them announcing an actual remaster was a humongous surprise. Hmm. Humongous surprise. Nobody knew about that. But uh, we didn't think that. Uh, I thought it might have been, like, a PlayStation 2, like, here's a – here, on next our, our next PlayStation Plus, or you can play place, you can play it on the PS4 right now completely for free. I thought it was going to be something like that. But, uh, uh... But no, it's a remake, and uh, awesome, awesomeness. Sony is just uh, feeding uh, the hype train that which is uh, pumping, uh, pumping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, Destiny Two. We get to see some story about that. Uh, not that excited about the exclusives. You got a strike. It's not a. Is it not? Is it enough to get a PS4, or is it enough to switch over to PC? Because it seems like a n- lot of people are switching over to the PC. But since I don't play PC, PC nerds, uh, I keep to my console because I like console gaming and console. You keep gaming to your console because your PC can't play. Destiny. Because well, <laughs> even if I had even if I had a PC, I probably wouldn't use it because I'm like console. PC. I personally will get it on both, just to say I have it on both. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's also good for reviewing purposes. Um, I, I like I said, like I've told you before, I'm getting the PS4 coming up, and I, I think I do think that it, it is a small amount of exclusives, but this is only the beginning. You look at the PS4 now with Destiny One. You don't want to call it Destiny One, just Destiny. There are so many more advantages to having Destiny on the PS4 now than having on the Xbox One. Because of the exclusives that Destiny offers, I mean, I mean, shoot, PC has to wait a month just to play Destiny, Destiny Two. Yeah, it used to be that Des- since Des- since, well, let's say this: since PlayStation Pro is actually uh, not as powerful as Xbox One X, mm-hmm. Scorpio, uh, whatever which, thing, what is that? It's referred to as. Uh, it's not as po- as it's not as uh, powerful, and definitely, 
uh, even though it'll be running in 30 frames, frames, uh, frames per second. And obviously PC is much more powerful because you can uh, customize it. Uh, it's limited, unless you have a cr- Unless you have a crappy PC. I mean, of course, it's not going to work well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, on PS4, it's not... This is the this is the uh, first time that PS4 is not uh, the best console to play on because this time it's on PC. This time Xbox does have the most powerful console, uh, but having the most powerful console, I know with Destiny it's a different story. But having the most powerful console doesn't mean you have the best games mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because Sony. So, so Sony definitely wins with uh, exclusives. It's definitely what they've shown. Even though Xbox did have a good uh, press conference with all their 42 games, and uh, they had 42 games, and they had what is the exact number? Bob, please tell me. Uh, 42 games with 22 exclusives. 22 exclusive, and that was a a lot of talking and a lot of the games to cover, which uh, uh, was a lot of writing on my part. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I did that early in the morning today when I woke up because last night I just was like, I'm going to bed uh, because I was moving and working and writing and a lot what? of stuff's going on. And so that's called life, and uh, PlayStation is life. <laughs> Boom! Welcome to the Monday morning PlayStation podcast with your host Dylan. <laughs> but uh, yeah, E three. Uh, so E three doesn't officially start until uh, tomorrow. Well, today, Tuesday. Uh, the floor is now open, and you can go out and play those games. That they've announced at the press conference. Uh, that's if you guys don't know. That's how E3 works. You do the press conferences, and then you have like three days to uh, go out and uh, play all these games uh, because you definitely want to. You definitely want to try any everything. And I'm glad they don't do the press conferences while the show is actually open. Uh, it's good that they do that. And one day, one of these days, I'll hopefully be able to attend an E3. <laughs> Uh, instead of live streaming it and covering it at my house, even though pe- some people do prefer that, but you know, E3 is E3, and uh, yeah, uh, you got anything to add? Um, I do agree that with with your liking of the of E3 being on a separate on you know how the press comes just earlier. There's a lot of gaming events that don't do that, and they, but they have a lot of. But they have a lot more events to do than just at one time. I yeah, think because, huh? Because e, because E three is like the one that everybody knows about. Mm-hmm. Right, right. It's it's every what everybody looks forward to. People fly from all over the world just to get to this one event. Um, it's like kind of kind of how in a very smaller fashion, Minecraft with Minecon is. People all over the world <laughs> uh, fly over to Minecon. Minecon. Uh, I I loved Minecon. Shut up. It was my childhood. But my point being is that people fly all over the world to get to that. People fly, all, I mean, like crazy all over the world just to get to the E3. And, I mean, it, it's one of those events that that is normally one of the most fun events you can ever go to. And it's I mean, you get games. I mean, it's like every nerd stream. Oh, God, I dropped my cone. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Destiny, Destiny Con, if you guys are looking for some more cons to go to, Destiny Con is in Florida. Uh, well, that's where we. That's, well, that's close to where we live. <laughs> that's where we live. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. Uh. But. Uh. Yeah. Uh. E3 is great. PlayStation is great. Uh. I hope. Uh. We. Uh. Satisfied your. Uh. Morning ears. With this. Uh. PlayStation podcast, and hopefully. Uh. You learned. Something today. Uh. So, with that note, my name is Dylan Lapore. Your name is... Steven Sunnell. And this has been uh, the Monday morning PlayStation, PlayStation Podcast. Podcast. 
the ep- every episode uh, airs on uh, SoundCloud what? and YouTube every Monday, every week at 6 a.m. Eastern Time. And feel free to uh, pass along a couple bucks uh, yeah, for feel- the road if you feel like it. Uh, go to YouTube.steamlabs. No, YouTube.streamlabs.com sla- forward slash Dylan Lepore. I will get that right someday. Passes along a couple bucks. He needs no it. worries. <laughs> you don't want to. More power to you. But uh, thank you and have a good day. This is Dylan signing off.